these various stages of our evolution to make us human beings as we are, what is the purpose of this life? Why are we on this earth? Is there any purpose or not? Or it is all purposeless that we should wander from this stage to another stage and now is that the last stage stage when we are human beings. Is this the complete maturity that we have achieved of our evolution? Is this the end of our evolution or we have to evolve more? Whether I go to cities or to villages, whether I go to universities or to places like Russia, where people are educated in a different way, I find everyone has this. You'll be amazed whether you're democratic or you're communistic or anything you are. They all are feeling that whatever they have is not their food. There is something more that is That's how the seeking is on and on and I am so very happy to see that there are so many seekers Like they have come here to know about seeking, to find out what we have to see. As I told you, the seeking is innate. That is built in within us. It has something to do with our evolutionary process, which is a living process. Perhaps we never realize what Christ talked about the living God. We do not understand what it means by a living God. That's why we get confused. We cannot pay for living things. We cannot. For example, a seed has to sprout, it will sprout. If you put it to the mother earth, it will sprout by itself continuously, you can't pay for it. You cannot pay to the seed, all right, I pay you one pound, will you please sprout? <laughs> you see a flower suddenly becomes a fruit or a tree. You are not paying anything to the flower. It has become spontaneously. Thousands of such flowers are becoming fruits. We can't do that. If you want, we can't. It just works out, we see all these miracles every day, but we do not think how it has happened. What is that power which has done this job? Then, the discrimination, supposing if you sow a seed, have peaches in the peaches. You won't get mangoes out of peach tree. Can't. And imagine the amount of beautiful arrangement and analytical planning. How it works? Your child looks like in the human body it is said that anything foreign goes in this human body is thrown away. But doctors cannot explain when the fetus takes it in the body, why is it not proper? It should be thrown away under all principles of natural laws. But there is something that looks after it, nourishes it, allows it to grow and when it has come to that stage, it comes out. There are thousand and one things I can tell you that nature is doing for us, which we take it for granted. All this is done by the all pervading divine power. I call it the love of God. It's the power of Holy Ghost. Who does all these things? But why should you believe me? In these days nobody believes anyone. That's a good idea. But they do. If you are mesmerized, you win. That's how many gurus have mesmerized, taken money, made big empires for themselves. Because in freedom to understand, you need innocence. You need sensitivity. We 
which I'm afraid is attacked every moment in the modern life. The matter is sitting on our head. It doesn't allow our spontaneity. The matter is all the time enveloping us and the spirit is lost. So, when we say about spirit, we must know that we have to see our spirit. The spirit which is within us, which is in our heart, which we have to seek, means this conscious mind should feel the presence of spirit within us. We know, I mean, we have read through there must be spirit somewhere. We also heard that the spirit is the one we have to get, that we have to be born again, all right, so we accept it. But how is it going to happen? Because it's a living process, because it's an evolutionary process, it will happen spontaneously by itself. As you have become a human being from a monkey stage, what have you done about it now? Effortlessly you have become a human being. In the same way, if it has to happen, it has to happen effortlessly. If you have to go higher than this stage of your existence as a human being, it has to happen effortlessly, without organizing it, without planning it. The plan is the plan of the nature, the divine plan that has to be. It's a divine that has to give you the grace to it. But in the modern times, we don't believe in the divine. We don't want to talk with God. We don't want to say that there is God, naturally. Because those who talked of God mislead us. They made all kinds of mistakes, I agree them. They didn't know what was to be done, or maybe they were ignorant about it. All the religions, every religion, not a fad or a cult, but a religion, has said that you are to be born again. You are to be resurrected. This is being said and promised. It has to happen. But how? Okay. <coughs> Why is such that it I ask how? I again say spontaneously. Right, sir. <coughs> that it has to happen that you have to become the spirit. But we get lost when people talk about God sometimes. <coughs> Australia, I met some people, they said we are born again, self-certified born again. I said, really? That's nice. My job is over. I'm very happy. <laughs> I said, but how do you say you are born again? What is the certificate? <coughs> oh, we imagine. I said, Samar, supposing tomorrow I say, I am the queen of England and go round. Nobody is going to believe me. Perhaps they might arrest me. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I am some political idea. If I have, if I have that, I am born again. No, I said. According to Bible, we are born again. What is according to Bible? There are many who have confronted me, Jews, Christians, Hindus, Muslims. I ask them, what is according to Bible should happen to you when you are born again? What Christ has said, convey the simple words, your hands will speak. Your hands will speak. That means there will be a new kind of sensitivity on you. That means your central nervous system will achieve 
a new dimension, a new awareness. In modern times, we have psychologists like you who have said that if you have to become something higher, you will be, be again, not imagination, not self-certificate, but actualization. Actually, you will be collectively conscious. This is the criteria. That you have to become, it is to be actualized. It is not that somebody says, oh, you are going to be conscious. How? Because you are all jumping together. <laughs> now, as I have told you in the very beginning, that living processes we cannot do, we can do only dead things. Like a tree is, then we make a table out of it. Like a chair, sit on the chair, the chair sits on our head. We can't sit without a chair. These are dead things. Can we transform one flower into fruit? So something that should happen to you which you cannot do. Jumping together for so great. All such things that we do can we can do without becoming twice born. All such ideas that people have that if you start behaving like a wild animal, you are a near as soon. I must say that sadly. Or that you start flying in the air, this is also stupid. Because now we are not going to become birds or frogs. We are going to become something great. Within ourselves, in our awareness, we are going to achieve something. So those who want to teach you how to fly, you should not give them 3,000 pounds each. You better tell them to fly, first of all. See how they fly. Drop them from this top of this <laughs> I think it was made for such people only. I used to wonder why this was so special here. It's better to try these people from there and see if they can fly even an inch. All such false stories we believe because they have a surface of them. Because they are not simple, they are complicated and too over complicated by they sound very bad. God knows what they talk, they talk of something and we say, oh, he must be a perfect master, the way he talks. God knows what he means, but what he does. We have to ask ourselves what have we got ourselves? promise that you will be the spirit, that you will become the spirit. That means your conscious mind will know the spirit, that the light of spirit will come into you, will give you the power of the spirit. We have to see, did we get that power? We have to find out. But spirit means dead bodies, dead souls. They put you into some sort of a mesmerism. <laughs> and you have to believe, oh, we are very spiritual people. Like so many cults have seen, they end up in suicides and they end up in all kinds of frenzy things, wild madness. You become a very normal, very dignified, very knowledgeable. And the knowledge about which people have said that you will have the knowledge is not the bookish knowledge. It's not what you read in the books or even from, from the Bible what you read is not what is written there. You have to have those deep insights to read what's written in these books. Christ never went into any school, into any college or universe. And he was so knowledgeable. There are many languages <coughs> in India. We can say people who are realized souls, perhaps never went for any because they are knowledge. So what does knowledge mean? 
that your awareness should know. Don't you understand what is the difference between the book knowledge and the awareness should know? For example, animals have no awareness for cleanliness, neatness, they have no awareness. You can take a horse to any place, he won't need anything to cover his nose. At the most, you can cover his eyes because he may go here and there. But for a human being to pass through such dirty places may be impossible, he may have to cover his nose. So the awareness of human beings as far as cleanliness is concerned, beauty is concerned, is much higher. But when he becomes a realized soul, what happens to his awareness? First and foremost, he becomes collectively conscious. That he knows what's wrong with other people. His hands speak. These five fingers, six and seven, represent the five sympathetic subtle centers within us and these five, seven of these and seven of these. And these seven, five, six and seven, and seven on this side, combine together to form the centers, which are subtle centers, one on the left hand side, one on the right hand side. Only on your fingers you can feed a person and say, all right, this gentleman, is having a problem here. That means he's suffering from this center, maybe he has got bronchitis or he has cold cover or something. He's got some sort of a fever or if you know it very well, if the sensitivity is This So the awareness that we have becomes the dynamic awareness by which we start feeling us. We start understanding the problems of others, physical, mental and emotional, on our fingers. Even this child was here is a born realized. There are many born realized children now in India. Just on their fingers they can say what finger is catching, what finger is burning, what finger is now. Then the knowledge about yourself is also there. You can also find out about yourself, what center you are catching. Now supposing a person is very egoistical. If you tell him that you are egoistical, you never see him again. What was what will happen? But after realization, he himself will come and say, Mother, my anger is catching better. Than because he starts seeing his ego. And he doesn't like it. Like, say, my sari gets uh, some sort of a spot and I can't see it. So it's all right. If you see, the sari is dirty, I may not like it. But if I see it, if there is light, I see it myself, then I'm not identified with that dog or with that dirt. I want to. Because you know about yourself, you are separated from yourself. You start seeing all this in yourself. You want to clean because you don't like it. Because you're obstinate. That is what happens to you. When you have this dynamic power in your attention, which tells you what's wrong with you, what's wrong with you. You start feeling the cool breeze for the first time of the Holy Ghost, the all-pervading power. In the Bible, once Christ was walking and some lady had his cloth on his head, who's touched him. His energy passed through him. That time, we did have realized people, so he was crucified. They were blind. They didn't know what he was. How did they know? He talked, all right, <coughs> but so what? He talked things, so what? They were not 
people with eyes. They didn't like him. They crucified him. They didn't want to accept at that time that their Messiah has come, that their Savior has come. They couldn't believe that in their lifetime somebody has come now and they stand in face to face with reality. They wouldn't accept it. I wish they had. On the contrary, within three years' time, Christ was crucified. Because he talked about it. Because he told them about the reality. They couldn't appreciate that he was pointing out something which they didn't have. They wanted to have a Masiya after 2000 years, even after that. That time must be 3000 years. And they wouldn't believe that Christ suffered. Suffered for their sins. They wanted to have sufferings. So they had this massacre. He has suffered for us. That means such a lot. It means that we don't have to suffer anymore. It means that all your karmas have no meaning in the presence of divine now. It means if Christ is awakened within you, he sucks in all your karmas, your conditionings, and also the so-called sufferings. He is placed here in the center of our gathering. One after another we have been making mistakes, so many mistakes, it takes only the life of Christ. Then about Muhammad, about everybody else. That they went to India and never told that Christ is born, that he has lived and has died on the cross. The way it should have been told, because already described. <coughs> they have already described about him that such and such great soul will be born, who he will be, from what level of awareness he will be coming, what he will be doing, <coughs> what will be his work in the Indian scriptures. Only the name was Mahavishnu. If you read about him, you will be amazed to such detail we have described. Even about Muhammad has been described in the ancient but the way they went to India, those who are talking of Christ, imagine they are Christians, most violent people. With a pistol in the hand and by the other. I've seen people who talk of Christ are extremely violent, disturbing, and sometimes shameless anti Christ. And the way they behaved, Nobody could believe that such a great personality has already born. They carried on with this karma theory and that's what the gurus are telling me. If you tell them we are paying you 3,000 pounds now, what about my ascent? They say, oh, but your karma is still there. One guru told that I just can manage only one sixteenth of it, the rest you have to manage. So you pay only for the one sixteenth, you have to pay for the rest perhaps. All these nonsensical things in the name of God has been going on for ages now. <coughs> My forefathers did it, your forefathers did it, and all of them have been doing it. Poor things, they didn't know what they have done, how they have been put into such horrible lanes of misguided. But now let us understand that the time has come for all of us to be with us. You are seekers of ages. That's how you are here. And you have to find your spirit. You have to have a little patience with yourself. That's one thing I ask. As I have patience for you, you have to have patience for yourself. That's all. Nothing else is needed. It 
you just walk out without a little repent. I'm quite sure of that. You had such a great poet like William Blake who has said that men of God will become prophets and they will have power to make others prophets. Whatever mistakes you have committed, you have to be forgiven. Because if this world is to be saved, this is creation that's the epitome of creation, the human beings if you have to be saved. The divine itself is anxious. The God Almighty has to use all his might to save. Because he has we have to be a little humble about it and it works out. It has worked wonders. Many people ask me that in India I am more effective, no doubt. Because Indians are simple people in the villages, in the smaller places, not the city are more sort of complicated. And they are very easy realization and to settle down. For them, this knowledge is already there. They know what to expect. They know what happens. So it's described. That you will get the cool breeze in the Bible. Also it is there, but we just get a glimpse here and there because people didn't allow you to live. Now. They didn't give him any chance. They just killed him. But India has a heritage of this. And they have a full idea as to what it is and how to recognize the saint. They know. Everyone knows who is a saint. They are not easily taken up by people who are doing all kinds of tricks. Only the modern people, you see, they, who, are, who have had no idea of the ancient scriptures and warnings, can be different. But not those who know. Or only the nun who have had no education about their heritage can be easily. Then people say, Mother, why are you so much anxious to be in India? Now I came to India just by chance, spontaneously. As you know, my husband got elected to this job. And this agency of the UN is London based. This is the only agency you have. All agencies are in Geneva or in Rome or in New York. This is the only maritime agency you have for which you got elected by so many countries. I'm just done here. Maybe it is all pre planned. As William Blake has said, England has to become Jerusalem. English people have a special response. They need not be influenced by French or Americans. They are quite sensitive, balanced people. If they can stand on their own personality, they can see clearly that everything circulates through them. England is the heart of the universe. Whatever happens in England circulates Oh, your prince got married. So many princes get married. All over the world. That's a special place you are born. And you are the sense of this dynamic heart. Perhaps it is yet not awakened to its own nature into that subtle situation where you can realize how it is related to the whole universe. But whatever it is, once you get your realization, you realize <coughs> what is the situation in this life. The subject matter is too big. And in London itself, I don't know how many, 500, 600 lectures are going to be there. And you can also hear my tears sometimes later. 
They can't program for the same time. Today, though, it's much easier to get your realization here. When you come in this room, it's darkness, you can't see anything. It's much easy to press the button to get the light. That to explain all the history about electricity and especially of Chaitham and when the electricity came here and how it was done, it's better to ask you to take the promise for that and get the light. After getting the light, we can talk about it. That's much better to understand. I'm very happy with this opportunity I could get because of the seminar here and I could teach you. I would request you if you have any questions, please ask. Then we have a session of the organization. And please don't be violent. I'm very clever and I know how to work it out. If you have to be argumentative, I can do it in, in, in London if you come down on a cup of tea. <laughs> We have a nice Georgian house, you enjoy that. But here, yeah, let us be careful <coughs> because we should not enter into the activities, as they say, dog of the manger. There are so many who are anxiously waiting for this happen. Let them have it. If you have any questions, you can ask me, but don't try to fight me. I have not come here to fight. I have just come here to relate you to your spirit. Once you get it, you can do it to other souls. It's just like one enlightened light can enlighten another, and the other enlightened light can enlighten Simple as that. Absolutely simple. So please ask me questions if you have any, and I think it will work out. switched on. Sometimes it's, uh, it's too powerful for the uh, everyday person to actually um, accept. So to speak. And, uh, you see, it's not a question of your accepting or not accepting. That's one thing one should know. Because, you see, one thing is that, you see, our attitude with seeking also has become like a shopping <coughs> attitude. Let's say, if, we, we, if you want to buy, otherwise we don't buy. That's not the point. See, and nobody's selling for that person. Secondly, it is a thing that you have. It's not for me to achieve. <coughs> for example, we went to this place where we had to sell. It's a beautiful place. Spread out for you. Now, if you want to enjoy it, if you want to close your eyes, you can close. It's like that. Alright, no question of accepting. It is there. If you want to have it, have it. Or if you don't want to have it, don't. 
you cannot force it on him. Neither question of your mental acceptance makes no difference. Because this is beyond your thinking. Your mind is limited. It is unlimited. Now say the river is flowing like river Ganges. It's flowing. If you want to fill your pitch and well, she is not going to force on you. You may say that I don't accept your answer. That's not the point here at all. You see, that you can say to the gurus who take money from you, you are paid for it, all right? So you can judge. Here it is question, if you want to have a realization, I am here for you. If you don't want it, all right? I don't want anything from you. Can't give me anything. That's one point. You just can't give me anything. I want the giving. Whether you accept it or not, it's yours. That's not mine. I want to give It's very common in the West. Because they think, I'm selling something, no? If I'm selling something, you can say, I don't want to accept or accept. It's not that. It's within you. It is there. Whether you accept it or is not the point. I didn't say, any, I didn't give you any opinion of mine about it. It's not an opinion whether you should accept it. I just give you a statement of fact. This is this, this is this. And this is what you have within yourself. Alright? Now, if you want to have your realization, I'm here. If you don't want to have it, alright? I cannot force. And I do a promise also to work out. Okay? You know? That's it. What is going to accept or not? You do not know anything about the spirit. Through your mental activity, how are you going to change? But you never judge that way, I have seen it. Where it has to be judged. Really, people don't. Otherwise, they would not have fallen away to these horrible things. They just go headlong into these things. All kinds of nonsense they do. In the name of God, in the name of seeking, in the name of finding something without thinking about it. I don't want anything from you. Actually, I don't need anything. Not to, I want anything. I have come to give you something. You need to come. I you would I why not? This is where I can start. Do you know what you are? You are a human being. Ages have taken to make you human. And there should be no difference. It's the most beautiful thing that you have. This cures cancer. He also all kinds of mental troubles, emotional troubles, physical troubles. Because the source of all the vitality starts to improve. Supposing you are driving the car. Your car is getting exhausted or your petrol is getting exhausted. So you are worried. You have tension. But if there is some way by which an opening takes place and there is a flow of petrol all the time, <laughs> it's fulfilling. It complements you. It gives you a meaning. You become beautiful. Don't have any diffidence about it. Nor too much confidence that you get it. All of you will I can only work it out, but I can't promise. All right? Any other question?
So there is no question of self-hypnosis because in hypnosis you don't know what you are doing. Here I know everything what I am doing, not only but you will also. It's not a question of only my doing. Now I am not here in Chalta, but if some surgery is here, we have somebody now from America and there was a boy who was patient of Kate. And he was in India, but he went to America in New York. He was there. And we had some people there. And the father came to me, grandfather came to me and his mother. They wanted the child to be sick. I said, all right, we try. I said, I can't go because I'm in a village now. But you can go to Una and telephone from here to Christine, who's here now. She's here. And tell her that such and such child is there. He's only hardy. What was the age? I think 16 or 16. And the doctors had declared that within one month he's going to die. I said, you just go and work out surgery now. He was completely cured. He came to see me in England. In London he was there. Then he's now in India. It's all right. Now this is only curing his one part. It's just a byproduct. Because I'm just saying we're so gross that people understand it better. And the subtle things if I talk, it can be. We have many people who are here who were drug addicts, alcoholics, worst type. Within one day, okay, within one day. But I know what I'm doing. And once you are a surgeon, you can remember. They know each and everything. I'm understanding it right to say that you buy insult and experience. You by instinct and experience mm -hmm. are determined and identified. And until we can do that, we don't know the truth. So much better. Yes, that's it. Unless and until you become a realized soul, you don't know the truth. That's a fact. You have to become a realized soul. Because just now, like a microscope, if you don't have, you cannot see microscopic things, alright? You have to have a microscope. In the same way, you have to have the spirit. To know about God, to know about everything. Right. Say, for example, it's a bit for people who yeah. believe in God or not, to believe in God or not, believe in God makes no difference because it's a myth, in a way. But it's not. For me, it's the truth. And for you also, it will be. Because once you raise the Kundalini, what happens? You start feeling these vibrations, which are from the absolute. Now, you ask a question about trust. Say a big problem they have about is immaculate birth. What's that immaculate? Tremendous vibration. You ask about is there God? Tremendous vibration. But if you want to ask about some person who is a fake person, is he a realized so? You might get burned. Sometimes we even get little blisters in that. <coughs> Your hands will speak. That means your hands are not yet speaking, they have to speak. It's very simple to make out if you are in your I have had people, say from uh, this transcendental one. They became epileptic, they did. I said, till you became epileptic, why didn't you know? What was happening to you? They said, we didn't know what was happening. You see, it was like going under a blanket. We didn't know where we were moving. All of them, they don't know anything about it. When I talk of knowledge, I don't mean that you turn any center and you just see a light or you get some sort of a pinprick or an experience. That you can get it with alcohol or It's the knowledge. Again, I say the awareness again. Awareness. You become much more alert, much more knowledgeable. The psychologists have kept all these things to themselves. That's the trouble with them. Is very dangerous people. They should have told what hypnosis is, but they themselves are hypnotized. I think. We, we are very really, really pathological and abnormal. Uh, because hypnosis is very easy to make. <coughs> very easy to make. 
sentimental que puede ser muy disfrutado. You say, I'm in love, and I'm in love, my guru, and I love my guru, and what is that? What's that? I'm talking of 
God Almighty, who is the ocean of compassion, ocean of love, ocean of forgiveness. What gift can you have? So please don't have any gift. Just say very clearly that, Mother, I have no gift. I am not guilty. Just say that, but close your eyes. And open your eyes when I tell you, because when the Kundalini rises, at Dagya Chakra, there is a dilatation of the pupil. If your eyes are not closed, it may not rise. It's just the again, other way down of hypnosis. In hypnosis, they hypnotize with the eyes. Close your eyes. Just close your eyes. The attention has to go inside. You cannot force it. Something has to happen inside to attract your attention. And that's how your attention is drawn by the awakening of the Kundalini, you get your realization and the spirit shines through your attention. Your attention becomes enlightened and effective. Please keep your eyes shut.